turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, I would like to read from Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. I would like to begin reading with the 17th verse and read through verse 22. Genesis chapter 26, beginning with verse 17, the Word of God says, and Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. They digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us. We shall be fruitful in the land. The number one thing that's under consideration in this chapter is water. They kept digging wells. In fact, the word of God says here that they digged again. We're going to be studying about the subject of water, the Lord willing, water. They digged again, the scripture says in verse 18, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. Now they are redigging the same wells that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had digged earlier. They, they're redigging the same well. So they're going right back down to the same place where they used to drink water out of and they're digging those wells again. The first well that they dug, the Philistines, and by the way, it was the Philistines who had covered up and stopped up all those wells. A lot of times the devil is working and the world is working to cover up wells of water that we need to be drinking from. <coughs> In the word of God there are a lot of parallels between the natural and the spiritual. For example you have natural water. The word of God will take that natural water talk about rivers and streams. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Rivers and streams. You have natural water. And you have spiritual water. You have natural food. You have spiritual food. You have a natural sun. You have a spiritual sun. So there are a lot of different ways that the scriptures draw a parallel between the natural world and the spiritual world. And I want us to think about water this morning and how you and I as a people of God we need spiritual water. We need to be drinking from the river of water of life that proceeds from the throne of God. In studying about water this week, I found that the expression living water was often used even by heathens uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, you had a contrast between living water and stagnant water. Stagnant water would be like you might find in a cesspool or in a ditch. You might find water that's not flowing, but when you find water that's flowing like a river and a stream and a well, that's called living water in that it's full of life and it will support life and it will strengthen life. 
but stagnant water will cause, can cause death, and it can cause sickness. And one of the problems the people of God have is that sometimes we're drinking stagnant water and polluted water rather than drinking living water. I want us to first go through a few scriptures and talk about water, spiritual water. Then I want us to go back to this chapter where it talks about them digging again the wells of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Let's begin by turning to Isaiah chapter 49. Listen please to verse 10. Isaiah chapter 49 beginning with verse, well I'll just read one verse, verse 10. Isaiah 49 10 is talking about <clears throat> some springs of water that God guides his people to. Now, I know that God can guide us to literal water, but God guides us primarily to spiritual water. Isaiah 49 and verse 10, the word of God says, They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And there ought to be a verse of scripture that immediately comes to your mind when you read Isaiah 49.10. In the uh, 23rd Psalm, the scripture says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And in that uh, 23rd Psalm, he says, He leadeth me, he leadeth me beside the still waters. But this says that he guides me, he shall guide them even by the springs of water. <coughs> even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Brethren, God guides us by springs of water. We don't appreciate water. We don't appreciate living water. We don't appreciate running water like we ought to. If we had to dig wells to get water, I remember at my granddaddy's house and at my great uncle's house, they all had wells and we had to drop the well bucket down and we had to draw the well up. I never had dug a well and still haven't dug a well like those wells. Now, those wells were dug with shovels and things that were about probably 30 or 40 inches uh, around or across in diameter. And those wells, you could look down in the well and you could see the water down in the well. And you periodically had to clean that well out. And you and I as the people of God, we need to realize that wells are important and that water is important. You cannot live but about three or four days without water. We need water. Your body needs natural water and your soul needs spiritual water and you need to be praying that God would feed your soul with spiritual water. We need to be seeking spiritual water. We need to be digging again the wells that are there and go down into those wells and get the water that's there for us. The Word of God is full of water. And if we dig in the Word of God, we're going to find that living water down in the wells that are here. And these are wells that have already been digged, but we need to dig again the wells of water. Uh, I pray that God will help us to realize how much wonderful blessings there are in the word of God as we drink from the wells of water that are here in the word of God. Go with me in your Bibles now to Jeremiah. Isaiah is, the next book is Jeremiah. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 13. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 13, the word of God says, O Lord, the house of Israel, all that forsake thee, shall be ashamed, now listen carefully, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Those that depart from God shall be written in the earth. Does that remind you of anything in the New Testament? Do you remember in the New Testament when there was a woman caught in the act of adultery and there were Pharisees that brought that woman to Jesus and said, does the law say put her to death? And Jesus knelt down and what did he do? 
he wrote in the earth. The scripture doesn't tell us what he wrote in the New Testament, but they knew this scripture, and this scripture says, those that depart from the Lord shall be written in the earth. So when he knelt down and began to write their names on the ground, what did they know that they had done from this verse of scripture? They knew they had departed from the Lord. Now listen carefully to the rest of the verse. Those that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. I want you to know that God is the fountain of living waters. You cannot find those living waters unless God blesses you to find those living waters. And God is the one that is sending forth those living waters. Go with me in your Bibles to John chapter 4. Now this is what Brother Joshua was talking about is where Jesus went to a well in the New Testament. And by the way, guess what well it was that Jesus went to? Have any idea? You go back and look at Genesis chapter 26 and you look at the history there and you look at this in John chapter 4. I think this is the same well that they digged again back there in Genesis chapter 26. John chapter 4, you'll see a couple of things that will make you think that, see that. John chapter 4 beginning in verse 4, the word of God says that he must needs go through Samaria. Was there a reason that Jesus went through Samaria? Every time the word of God says that he must needs go somewhere, it was because he had a particular thing he was going to do there. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, who, who digged again the wells of Abraham back there in Genesis chapter 26? Who digged again the wells of Abraham? Isaac. Isaac. And who was Isaac's son? Jacob. And, and Jacob gave the, this land to his son, uh, Joseph. Now listen carefully to verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Did they all have a lot of different wells that they dug? It takes a lot of work to dig a well. And these people dug wells. Did you know there are people that have dug wells that I am drinking out of today? Now, sometimes I need to go and dig again those wells because dirt gets between me and the water. Sometimes a well will cave in. The dirt falls in on that. And you have to kind of pump it out again. We use pumps instead of shovels today. But if the well falls in, if dirt's in the well, they have to get the dirt out of the well before you can drink that water. And so it is in all of our lives, sometimes we let dirt get between us and the living water. And you know what we then have to do when the dirt gets between us and the living water? We have to dig, what's the word? Dig again the wells of water. So verse 6 says, John 4 and verse 6, And Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Now, is Jacob's well a literal well or is it uh, a figurative well? Is it a natural well or is it a spiritual well? It's a natural well. Verse 7 says, Then cometh a woman, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Why? Because Jesus needed natural water just like you and I need natural water. And all of us need natural water. And that's the reason he... He uses the illustration of spiritual water because just as much as you need natural water, your soul needs spiritual water. Verse 8 says, For his disciples were gone away into, unto the city to buy meat. Verse 9 says, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, that is unto Jesus, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of thee, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, 
Thou wouldest have asked of me or of him, and he would have given thee living water. The gift of God can be seen as Jesus Christ, or the gift of God can be seen as the living water. Brethren, you and I as a people of God, we need to realize that God has given us great gifts. Unto us a son is given. That's a great, that's the greatest gift of all. But there are a lot of other gifts, and living water is a great gift. And who is the source of the living water? God is. And you need to be going to God. I believe, brethren, with all of my heart, you can go to God in prayer and God can give you living water while you're praying. I believe you can be singing. I, I drank from that fountain when Sister Galen was singing a while ago. I was drinking from the fountain. And the songwriter says that we sing in our hymnal sometimes, I'm living on the mountain. I'm drinking from the fountain that never shall run dry. I'll tell you, brethren, we as a people of God, we have the privilege to drink from a fountain that never shall run dry. And that's what Jesus told to this woman about. And he said, if you had known, you would have asked of me. And I would have given you something even greater than this natural water. I'll tell you, brethren, you and I as a people of God, we need to realize there's something even more valuable than all the natural water that we have to have. We have to have it to live naturally. We have to have spiritual water to live spiritually. Now this living water is not just handed out without you asking for the living water. And the living water is not always given out. In fact, I'm going to tell you that the best water, you have to dig and dig to get to the best water. I have a well in Thomaston, and the well in Brother Joshua's backyard is only 20 feet deep. It's a shallow well. I have a well in Thomaston that's 480 feet deep. Which one of those has the coldest and the best drinking water? The one in Thomaston, the deeper the well. Typically, usually, the deeper the well, the better the water. You and I as the people of God, we need to know that the more we dig in the Word of God, the more God's going to give us some living water. And we're going to rejoice in how good that living water tastes to our soul. And turning your Bibles to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, the Word of God is talking here about this living water. Revelation chapter 21, listen to verses 6 and 7. This is talking about the holy city, the new Jerusalem that came down from God out of heaven. Revelation chapters 21 and 22 are not talking about the eternal heaven, but they're talking about the kingdom of heaven. They're telling you that you have to work and you have to labor to enter this kingdom of heaven. The uh, 21st and 22nd chapters of uh, Revelation talk about you and I as the people of God overcoming in order to partake of things that are in that holy city. Revelation 21 and verse 6, the word of God says, And he saith unto me, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. What's he say that he's going to give to those that are thirst? Living water. Living water. I will give the fountain of water of life freely. Come down to chapter 22 and verse 1. Revelation 22 and verse 1. I want you to see there's living water that's available to you that you may have been drinking out of cisterns. You may have been drinking out of cesspools. You may have been drinking out of water pots that has stagnant water in it and you need to go to the living water. You need to go to the water that proceeds out of the throne of God. Revelation 22 verse 1, the word of God says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the, law, of the Lamb. <clears throat> Where does this river of water of life come from? It comes out from under the throne of God. It comes from God. Verse 2 says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life. That tree of life, again, is available to the people of God while they live here. And this tree of life bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Brethren, we as the people of God, 
We need to be going to God and begging God to bless us to drink from this fountain that proceeds out of the throne of God. Come down to verse 17. Revelation 22 verse 17. The scripture says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water, let him take the water of life freely. I'll tell you, brethren, the water of life, the living water, is something we need for our souls. Now, let's go back to Genesis chapter 26. Now remember that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, I love to think about a grandfather and a father and a, and a grandson. I love to think about two or three or four generations getting together and doing things together. Me and my daddy and, and uh, my granddaddy built a little house that we have in Thomaston that I mentioned a while ago. Uh, and, and Marty helped a little bit when he was a little boy. Didn't Well, he helped. So there were four generations of us that built that house. But brethren, you and I as the people of God, we need to realize the significance of the family unit. And the family unit is important. And I think one of the greatest blessings we have in the church is to see several generations together in the house of God. But I want you to know that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, all three of them, that was three generations that they together, they dug those wells of water. And then later when they came back, the Philistines had covered those wells of water up. But Isaac came and he knew where the wells were. And he went to that spot where the wells were and he dug down until he found that well of water. They dig several wells of water. And Isaac dug, redug. He digged again that well of water. There are many things in the Word of God that me and my daddy used to study years ago. I used to sit down with old preachers when I was a young preacher. And before I ever began preaching, I used to sit down with six or eight preachers once a month. I used to sit down and, and listen to them talk about the Word of God and feed on the Word of God and share the Word of God and study the Word of God. I'll tell you, brethren, I sometimes go right back to those same wells of water that I drank from with those men. I go back to those same wells of water and I drink again. I dig again. And I find again that living water that's in those wells. There are a lot of wells of water. Think of a well of water. I want you to think about, and listen, when you think about a well of water, you can think about a lot of different things in the Word of God. And one thing you can think about is a book of the Bible. I'm going to name a book. The book of Ephesians. I'll tell you that book of Ephesians is full of living water. In fact, I strongly encourage you, if you, if you want to study a book of water, here's a well, here's a well. The book of Ephesians is a well of water. Now, if you want to study an easier book first, then, then look at the book of James. There's only five chapters in the book of James. Take that book of James, and then take the book of Ephesians, and then take 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. I'll tell you, every one of those books of the Bible is a well of water. And I can go to Ephesians and I can dig and I have often spent a month or two months or three months at a time just digging in the book of Ephesians. Just digging and re-digging and finding more water in the book of Ephesians every time that I found before. I find fresh flowing water in the book of Ephesians or the book of James or the book of Genesis all through the Bible every book is a well of order and sometimes I forget what was in Genesis and so what do I need to do I need to go back and dig. dig again from that well of water I'll tell you another way you can look at wells of water besides the books of the Bible is subjects in the Bible 
So many times there's a subject in the Bible that I've studied and studied and I've dug that well and I've drank from that living water. But then sometimes I leave that well and I'm drinking from other wells of water and sometimes when I get back, guess what I find out? I found out there's a lot of dirt between me and the water that's down there and I have to dig again the same subject I have to go back and dig again in order to find the living water in that subject in the Bible. For example, if I were to talk to you this morning about eternal salvation, and I were to talk about election and predestination and salvation by grace, and our eternal salvation is not of our works and not by our works and not according to our works, if I were to tell you all about eternal salvation, I can do it. And it just come from my head. Or if I have redug that well, it'll be like a fountain of living water coming out of me that I will be feeding you. Do you follow the difference there? <coughs> and so sometimes we as a people of God, we need to redig the same subjects we've dug before. Salvation. How many times has God saved you? Brother, God has saved me. He saved me. And Sister uh, Galen, when she was singing about that, she talked about the God that shakes the jail and saves those. I'll tell you, brethren, I've never been locked up in jail, okay? But I have been in bondage to a lot of different things in my life. The devil gets hold of my head sometimes, and, and my head is in jail. And I have to pray, God... Help me to break the bars that Satan has on me. Help me to break the bondage that I'm in. Help me to break loose from this. Help me to get out of this jail. And I'll tell you the God that Sister Galen was singing about is the God that is the God that's able to break the bands. He's able to shake the prisons. He's able to open the doors. He's able to deliver God hath delivered me. He delivered me 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He saved my soul. I'm digging in a well right now. He saved my soul. I'll tell you also, He saves my soul day by day as I need help and I need guidance and I need spiritual food every time He gives me food. The scripture says that Jesus says, blessed are they that Hunger and, what's the next word? Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. You know what you're digging there? You're digging again the well of what? What's the well? Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness. So when you start digging in that well of righteousness, you're going to find living water there. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they're going to be filled. You and I as a people of God, there are so many different subjects in the Bible that we need to, what's the two words we're looking at this morning? Dig again. Dig again. Dig again. We need to dig again the wells that are there for us. If you don't keep digging in the wells that God has given to you, you're going to find a day that you're going to seek that well and you can't find the well anymore. You're going to dig down and you're going to dig and you're going to dig and there's nothing there anymore. I know many, many churches and many dear saints of God that stopped digging again the wells of Zion. And it's all dried up in those areas. Turning your Bibles now to uh, Isaiah chapter 12. Very, very quickly, Isaiah chapter 12. Listen please to verses 2 and 3. This is a well of salvation. We, we just were talking about that. In Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 12, listen please to verses 2 and 3. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Who is my salvation? Who is your salvation? Every day, who is your salvation? God is my salvation. Verse 3 says, Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells 
of salvation. So you can have the well of salvation. What about the well of the kingdom of heaven? Has anybody here this past week dug in the in the well of the kingdom of heaven? You dig again. You dig again. You dig again. What about the beauty of the church? Have you dug again and studied all about have you, have you ever dug again the beauty of the family? Have you ever dug again? I know children can be very frustrating sometimes. But you need to, everybody here, listen to me carefully. You need to dig again and see that children are a blessing. Amen. Now, some things are very difficult to see the blessing in. But you and I, every one of us that is blessed with children, every one of us, we need to pray, God, help me to drink some water out of that well. Because right now all I'm getting is dust. And all I'm getting is something that's not helping me. And all I'm getting is mad. And so Lord help me to go back to that well. Did you know every child is a well? Every child is a well. I need to go back to those children. And I drink, need to drink the water that's found in that child that's a gift from God. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's sake.